Who's in, who's in, who's in, who's in? I've got one like and one person in. Who's in, who's in, who's in? <coughs> London Shadows slot. <clears throat> Wait for more people to come in. I weren't really, I'm not really in a mood to do a live right now, but people were like, after it, just get one on. Yeah, man. What do we reckon, guys? Was it a goer? Was it a. It was, I'll tell you one thing. It was a lot better than last week's episode. I'll tell you that for nothing. <clears throat> um, I didn't go into full detail. Um, it, I touched base with things. And the reason that I touched base with things is because everybody knows what went on uh, with the individuals and stuff, right? It's not a secret. It's out there in the public domain. So I just said, yeah, I was on the doors, got involved with this, that and the other. Um, didn't incriminate anybody. Didn't name anybody. <clears throat> yeah, that's nine of the 11, bro. Nine of the 11. I used to run the door. I was the head doorman at a club called Legends in Ashton under Lyon. And um yeah, it was fierce. It was a it was a mad club. It was fucking mental. You had Molly's, you had the bedroom, and you had Legends, which were the three most just fucking nuttiest fucking clubs, guys. It was early two thousands. Um it was fucking mental. <laughs> really fucking mental. Um Good times, man. The the club that I used to run the door, I became, I'd been working. Uh, um, I can't remember where I come working from, but I was offered the head doorman at this club, right? Now, like I said, it was just, um, I just got offered it. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So I became a doorman. Well, I say a doorman. There's only two of us. You can't really class yourself as a head doorman. But the club was called Legends. Search for Legends Ashton or Legends Ashton underline L-Y-N-E. Right, you'll see the rave scene, what the club was like. It was fucking nuts. So yeah, that's where I was the Ed Dorman. It was for oh mate, it was full of lunatics. Absolutely. Everyone was off the nut on ecstasy and cocaine and it was full of gang members. And it was Ashton on the line. You might think, well, Ashton. I used to do the door to I uh, legend uh, not legends. I worked at Legends, but I used to be a doorman at used to be called Club Havana. Then it was called, bless me, then it was called Club Hidden, and then it was called Pressure, right? And I, I was a doorman there, and that was full of gang members as well. Again, Gooch, Doddington, Cheetah Mill. Uh, you had Longside Crew, or the LSC. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit fucking nuts, man. Old Trafford Crips and stuff. Yeah, man, gypsies are good people, man. I like travelling folk. Might be a gorger, but I, I've got nothing but love and respect for travellers. Got to get on with travellers a lot. <clears throat> do you know what, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you know what? The weird thing is with Rod Carter, right? I've got to be honest with you, right? He's out of the game now, right? And, yeah, so I was on a document... I, no, I wasn't on a documentary. There was a, there was a TV programme called the BBC, The Big Questions, right? And there was some couple of former gang lads. Uh, I was on it. You had French, yeah, um, a few criminologists. And Rod Carter was on there... Now at the end of the doc, at the end of the filming, right? It was a live episode. Uh, it was filmed up at Media City. Uh, we were featured guests, right? And I went over and I was speaking to Rod Carter, me Frenchie, and Rod Carter were talking in the green room. He's a cool guy, but when he was active, uh, it was a copper, and the coppers are the enemy. And I'm anti police, and I will be till the day I die. Um, but like I said, there was no, he had no legal authority, and. I was out of crime. Frenchie was away from crime. Rod Carter was not a copper, so we we had a we had a we had a nice little conversation, just the three of us. It was nice, but uh, the documentary, um, like I said, I didn't know what it was actually on. It was when we when they contacted me. It wasn't like oh, it's gang wars. It was like the criminal underworld in Manchester, and we're talking gangs and gangsters and clubs. And the one thing I will say straight off the bat. Why they called me a former gangster, I will. They classed me as a gangland enforcer, not a word I'd ever use, and not, no, not something that I even revel in. I said, no, no. I was just loyal to people. That was it. I was nobody. I was just loyal to people. Um, but yeah. So when he was asking me questions and stuff, right, you can't. 
Um, Dan, I'll have to, Dan's in America for those that don't know. Dan's over in uh, Swissville uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Dan, I'll try and sort something out and I'll try and get it to you in some regard or another. Uh, hopefully I can get it uh, filmed and sent to you or I can ask the, uh, the film crew uh, to send me a copy. But yeah, with the whole thing, right, have you noticed, right, when I spoke, I didn't speak out of turn, right? I was like, yeah, I did the door. I became involved with X, Y, and Z. I didn't name them. I just said, yeah, I, well, I, I named the, the, the gang that w were prominent in the club. Um, but I didn't mention individual members because you just don't do that. You don't incriminate them and you just don't mention them. Um, but yeah, and that's why when it said in the thing, I said nine of the 11, I used to have, like, when I was working the door. And that was it. But the club was the club was prominent with the drug scene. Uh, the, the gang wanted to sell drugs exclusively in the club. Um, I wanted to make money. They wanted to make money. We came to a mutual arrangement. Uh, and then that was it. It just sort of ran from there. Um, when in 2007, on the back of the, the murders of Yu Kal Chin and Tyrone Gilbert, one of the members of the gang that used to run up in the club actually turned supergrass and sent the other sent the other 11 to prison for 235 years between 11 of them uh, and that's the way it goes and again i won't say his name but he turned grass on the boys um and that was it so i don't know it's just crazy isn't it how things go down what did you guys make of it yeah man did you see what they said about um, about what you just said there? They said it actually got a higher minimum tariff than the Yorkshire Ripper. The Yorkshire Ripper was a serial killer. And well, still is a serial killer, Peter Sutcliffe. It was different, guys. Like I said, if you if you look, if you go on my five app and you you type in hard men street justice or whatever, it'll come up. Watch last Monday's episode on Birmingham. Now, like I said, Birmingham is every bit as violent and as dangerous as Manchester, a million percent. But the Birmingham episode did not have the impact that the Manchester episode had. It was filmed in last year. It was filmed, I think, in October last year. It was recorded last year. 2019 what did you guys make of it who watched it who didn't watch it who's going to watch it like I said just a small part of it the feature was obviously Matthew yeah the Manchester one was better I don't know not many people might have watched the one last week but last Monday there was an episode that aired on the Birmingham one last Monday I'll tell you what might even beat the Manchester one Liverpool next week there's Liverpool coming up next Monday. Should be a good watch. But like I've said, when you do these documentaries, you've got to be careful what you say. I was just just open with it. The drugs gang that I was involved with, again, no names. That was in Rochdale. Uh, they, they was running big amounts. Big, big amounts. On a national scale. Big, big, big. Really, really interesting... Uh, life and stuff like that and I was running things I ended up running there running it for them uh, and I was debt collecting as well and then moved on from there and then like I said through doing the doors came into contact working for gangsters and stuff like that on the doors uh, then became the adornment at a club where it was prominent with gangs became involved with them and then through working the doors again became involved with Dominic Noonan um, it just goes down that way doesn't it like I said, when I was born, I used to, I didn't want to, I used to want, I used to like fear, like never having any life experience and stuff. Um, and I used to want life experience and I'm 36 now and I've got a lot of life experience. I'm nobody guys, again, nobody. Just be, because you're on TV doesn't mean you're famous. If anything, I'm an, I'm an idiot. But like I've said, but like I said, um, a lot of these, a lot of these TV things and stuff come off the back of me being associated with Dominic Noonan. Dominic helped me a lot, a hell of a lot. And like I've said, 
been involved with drugs, gangs. That was a national scale operation, that. No doubt about it. National scale operation. The amounts of, the amounts, the kilos and kilos and kilos. I was sick of seeing heroin and crack cocaine. Never taken them, never would take them. But I was sick of seeing the sight of them. People just stand in you like fucking, like whole doors full of dough and that. And then, like I said, it was never my dough, but I was paid for what I was doing. I was paid handsomely, and rightfully so. But like I said, um, I've ne I'm nobody. Again, I, I can't reiterate that enough. I'm absolutely nobody. There's no ideas of grandeur here, right? It's just one of them stories. Interesting documentary, guys. True crime. Like I said, I didn't incriminate anybody. Everything that's out there is already out there in the public domain. Uh, there's docu that Rod Carter. Go on YouTube and search for Bringing Down the Gooch, right? And Rod Carter was one of the mainstays of that program. Uh, and he drives around Moss Side and uh, Rush Home and uh, all them sorts of areas where these murders were going down Anson Road in Long Sight and things. If you if you search on YouTube, bringing down the gooch, I think it's forty six minutes, fifty minutes, right? And that's it. Really interesting documentary. Um, and like I said, from what I remember of watching the documentary, I don't think there was a mention of the kid who brought down um, the the whole. The reason that everything imploded was on the back of one of the shootings. The the car wasn't destroyed. It wasn't burnt out. And there was forensics from, from balaclavas and stuff in the car. And, like, there was leather seats in one of the vehicles. I'm saying this because I watched the documentary. Um, and, yeah, and one of the gang members, who's now been given a new identity, um, he turned super grass on the boys. And he, and he became a prosecution witness. And that was it. No, I've not seen this article on Liverpool, no. Liverpool's on next Monday, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, I was a bit worried, though. Did you see Did you see it, right? I thought, I'm chatting on to these lot about what's going down and stuff, and then it's moved it to Liverpool, so I didn't. I was a bit wary about that. But like I said, um, these documentaries, guys, they, they contacted me, and they didn't say, oh, it's specifically on gangs. No, no, no. They just said it's about crime and prison and... Um, being involved in that world and stuff, right? So I was like, oh, okay. So I went down and stuff. I liked, I liked him on the phone. So I was like, yeah, so I went down. And that was it. We had a few talks, backwards and forwards for a few hours. And then I went down to meet him in Manchester. We filmed it in Barton Arcade, uh, below, the, below it. So, yeah. But like I said, again, I'm absolutely nobody, guys. I, I don't proclaim to be anything. I'm not, I'm nobody. I wasn't a gangster. As they put former gangster, I'm like, no, no, no. Former criminal, former doorman. Uh, they've, been, they've turned me in the past gangland enforcer. Not, not, not a term of phrase I would ever use. Cringy as hell uh, to use that sort of terminology. I was just friends with people. I was loyal and that was it. Uh, I was a doorman. I, I can always, the one thing I can always say, always to this dying day, to this day, is I can look in the mirror and know myself. I never burnt anybody. I've never had anyone sent to jail. Do you know what I'm saying? I live by the code. Um, I was loyal to everyone I've come into contact with, but when sometimes you're looking out for other people, they're looking out for themselves and stuff like that. So, yeah. But the documentary, I think it's quite edgy. If I didn't, if I wasn't involved in it, still edgy, still catchy, still newsworthy. Like I said, guys, I don't sit there and just think, Oh, well, I'm on this documentary, so I'll watch this. I watch all crime documentaries. I watched last Monday's on Liver uh, sorry, on Birmingham last Monday. Watched it. If you watch serial kill documentaries, I've watched them. If you American serial kill documentaries, I've watched them. I don't watch anything to do with American gangs. It's not really my forte. It's not really my thing. It doesn't really interest me. Uh, but British gangsters, British gangs, um, I was raised and stuff like that. So I've got a vested interest and stuff in all of those things. Like I said, I was raised, or I wasn't raised with, I had an interest from a young age in gangs, gangsters, and serial killers. I went on to be involved with all of the above. It was just one of those things. But like, the manager's called Gavin, right? He's no longer with us. God bless him, he died. 
but he he was like the manager and he said them lads in the corner they're the West End gang now the West End was an area of Ashton now this gang operated in the West End of Ashton amongst other areas but we just thought there was a local gang and stuff, right? And at first, when I first had to speak to him and stuff, right, I said, listen, I said, do, like, I spoke to the main kid, uh, the main kid, one of the, well, not the main kid, um, but one of the, like, lieutenants, if you will, uh, and said, look, I said, the managers have said that you can't be in an air at this time with ease on, so can you go get some jeans on and stuff, and then you, your suite can come back in a club. They actually, it was a bit like, a mm, bit of a standoff. Eventually they left, which was they did it under their own steam and stuff like that. Um, it was one of those situations. They went, they, they got changed, they came back to the club, and we had that understanding every week from there. And yeah, it was a good do. Uh, they used to they used to all sit in the corner, backwards and forwards to the toilets, dealing and wheeling, dealing and doing bits and pieces. Um, and it became the the incident that I spoke about on the documentary, where. These rivals, right? There was no, they didn't, they weren't told up. It was kids, right? And me and the boy on the door backed him, right? And um, it was fucking crazy. And we've run in the club. We've heard the sirens, and we thought, shit, town centre cameras. We're we're all getting nicked for us. So I've run into the back. Um, I think I had a knuckle duster on me or something like that. So I had to get rid of this. I had to get, and the, one of the boys has run in, and he's gone, and he had, a, you know, the strap bags, yeah. And he, he's like that, and I said, bro, I said you can't come back here. And a kid, bro, has gloved up. The kids pulled out a fucking revolver, bro. Like, I was like, what? I was like, right. So I said, listen. He said, need to get rid of this for me. So I got rid of that. Um, and then I put it, I managed to put it away. The, the police wasn't for us. There was another bigger incident at one of the other clubs kicking off. Uh, and all resources and town centre cameras must have been focused on that. And that's why we never came to their attention. Um, but yeah, it was uh, the doors. Working the doors in any city, any town it, it, it is absolutely mental. Um, and you, like I said, you just got to be. A lot of these clubs, a lot of these security companies are owned by respected figures. I'll say that much. The, the, most of these clubs are owned by respect. The security, the, the SIA, Security Industry Authority, and things like that. But yeah, it was an interesting documentary. Um, like I said, didn't incriminate anybody, just touch base. And yeah, yeah, was doing a club. This is who, like, it was this affiliation. This is what I was doing. And then I was speaking about my own stuff. Um, never incriminate anybody. So that sort of mindset you've got to have. Nobody's talking, guys. I don't know if the, 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 the thing's taking ages to come up again or what. There's no comments coming up again. I think we're having problems, guys, aren't we? I might knock it on the head, guys, because I th I don't think we're getting anywhere, are we? <clears throat> I didn't have that. I've not even had the mac and cheese, man. Thank you, Julie. It's gone, I think. What's gone? How are you finding isolation? piece of piss i've been in prison so isolation's a piece of piss and all those idiots who oh, um isolation is very much like um prison no it's not check my mobile for what no nah, it don't really bother me mom I go out, I need, I still go out, I still got, I went to the supermarket, I've been out with my ma, I go, I go and if I go for walks, I've been down uh, the, tra the trails and stuff like that, if I want to go for a walk, I go for a walk, I'm not, I'm not really going to be doing all this like uh, government guidelines stuff, I'm, I'm, I, if I feel the need to go out and go on a mooch, I'm going on a mooch. Robert Myers, Chris. No, I've not met any famous prisoners. I've met, like, all the usual stuff. Murderers, uh, people in for murder, armed robberies, gangsters. Who's this fucking knob here? Fucking idiots. What a mo see You see Muppets like that? Fucking idiots. What a fucking knob. Fucking bellends. If I take from an arsehole, Chris, 
this fucking... Oh, right, guys, I'm going to knock it on the head because it keeps doing this spinning thing. It's doing me fucking head in. So I'm going to knock it on the head, guys. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, called it out.